Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I wanted to discuss Chase, Payment Tech, and s some improvements that need to be made. So I use Chase Payment Tech because they have not screwed me over and they have been very affordable. So the rates that I get with them wind up being dirt cheap. I mean like close to 2 to 2.2% usually, and that includes online business. That's insane, especially when you have people using rewards cards. Uh, you know, it's a variable rate, so it changes from time to time, but it's always been way under what I can get with virtually any other provider. It's insanely cheap, when you, especially when you consider that a lot of our transactions are online, not just in store. That being said, that unfortunately does come with a price, and part of the price is that I imagine that they have not updated their interface in approximately 25 years. When I got my first computer that was that had a GUI, that was a Pentium 2. It was a Dell 233 megahertz Pentium 2 in 1997. Before that, I had a 286. And the way that this site is designed actually looks like it was designed for that for for that Pentium 2. So if we take a look at just any modern website and how it looks like. So over here, you have Wikipedia. Uh, I, right now it's it's cropping off the edges, but it, that, that's OBS, that's not the website. Here is you know, web news site bloomberg.com. Here you have slash dot. Uh, here you have Amazon and over here you have Chase Merchant Services for the login and here's the actual login. So the first thing that you notice is the size of these tiles. So this over here looks like it was put together probably around 1997 and not updated ever since, which is kind of silly. But I'm probably going to be crossing out certain things here that are that uh, that you just that you don't need to see like count numbers and stuff like that. So there's a few details here that I really want to dig into. So I'm going to zoom in over here. I'm just gonna... So the first thing you notice here is that up here in text that has no anti-aliasing on it, it says development merger not for production use. I imagine that was an internal note for whoever was designing this system at Chase or whoever they contracted it out to be designed for, where it says development version not for production use. That most likely means that whatever is going on in the system over here is not not something that I'm supposed to see. So that's an internal debug development message, and that is on the main product that is being used by people processing credit card transactions from one of the richest banks in the world. Ouch. Second thing you may notice is that everything here is blurry. So if you look at net deposit amount, this is blurry. If you look at the text down here, this is blurry. If you look at where it says American Express, debit, discover, MasterCard over here, if you look really close and you zoom in uh, with, with, on your screen, what you'll see is that that text actually looks like a JPEG of a GIF of uh, another JPEG of another JPEG of another JPEG or a scan of a scan of a scam. None of that really looks like it makes any, it, it just looks like crap. But the real issue here is the actual functionality. So let's say that you have a chargeback, right? Now, if you use Square or PayPal, there's a lot of things wrong with Square and PayPal, and I could go on for days on it, and I have on this channel. But you have a, you have a chargeback. You know where to find it. You have a dispute. You know where to find it, and you know what to do. Let's see what happens on this system if I want to find that. So this is it when I'm not zooming in. So let's say I go to, uh, here we go. I, I want to find a char okay, chargeback review. Where do I go? Do I go to exceptions, dispositions, reversals, denied reversals, representments, pending chargebacks, miscellaneous chargeback, debit adjustments, or chargeback management? Let me repeat that again. We have exceptions, dispositions, reversals, denied reversals, representments, pending chargebacks, miscellaneous chargeback, debit adjustments. What is all of this? Like, wh why? I mean, why? When you select, there's no, there's no available records for the input criteria given. Try again. So I select my company. Let's say I got a chargeback last month and I want to find it. Or let's say I got one sometime in June. So this over here is debit adjustments. Nothing there. Okay, so let's go miscellaneous chargebacks. Now, how do I know if it's a miscellaneous chargeback versus another type of chargeback? Who the hell knows? You click select. You go up here. And uh, I, I click because I do know I have something. And I hit this and nothing shows up. As you can see, there are no chargebacks over here. However, I do have a chargeback. So how am I going to find that? So now there is something here called chargeback management under chargeback review, but that's under debit adjustments, miscellaneous chargebacks, pending chargeback, representments, denied reversals, reversal dispositions, and executive exception summary. Once you get to chargeback management, it gets better. No, wait, there's more. 
you don't see a chargeback there, but it says chargeback work queue. I'm just going to zoom in so that you guys' eyes don't bleed through this garbage interface. You click my chargeback work queue, but which one is it? Is it my chargeback work queue? Received. Decision by payment tech. Pending ch payment tech decision. Expired return to mer merchant. Aging detail. Management queries to be assigned. Work tracker. Auto assign rules. I, I have a chargeback. I want to find the chargeback. Which one do I go to? Okay, let's go through and figure it out. Is it my chargeback work queue because I have a chargeback that I need to work through? Nope, it's not that. Is it received because I received the chargeback? Nope, it's not that. Decision by payment tech? It's not there because it hasn't been decision yet. Pending payment tech decision? Nope. Expired return to merchant? Nope. Aging detail? Okay, now once we've gotten to this screen, once, we well, once we're on this screen, you may notice that I've cropped something out. I cropped this out because this piece of shit actually put the customer's credit card number on the screen. That's right. Even my garbage piece of shit website, actually when you go through the order list, it only shows you the last four digits of the credit card number used. It does not save the entire credit card number. Nobody ever saves the entire credit card number. Why the hell is this piece of shit system actually saving the credit card number? That's insane. Okay, I've cropped that out, but look at all the crap you have to go through to find a chargeback here. This is nuts. Now. Here's the thing about this that I can't really go through with you until I respond to it. Once you've responded to it, it's actually very difficult to tell, based on the language that is used here, whether or not you have won. So it puts a code up here, and you'll see case status, like CBRTM, CBRTM, RECCB. There's a bunch of language on the screen like that, and none of that actually tells you whether or not you've won or you've lost your chargeback. I remember Steve and I responded to one a long time ago. We don't get chargebacks very often, but every now and then you have a scammer who will like buy something from the online store, gets it, signature confirmed, never called us, never anything, and it happens from time to time. But this is such a bad interface, it's very difficult to tell if you've won or you've lost. So we spent about 20 minutes sitting here trying to figure out if we won or we lost the chargeback a long time ago. We Googled all of the different codes, and none of it made any sense, and we just gave up. It actually wasn't worth it, because I think it was for a $37 transaction, and for the time that he was taking away from hard drives, that I was taking away from board repair, it actually didn't even make sense to figure out if we had won or lost that chargeback based on this. Because it can't just say, you won, you lost, money returned, money not returned, whatever. No, it, ha it actually has little codes that are cryptic letters and numbers that you're supposed to know what it means. I, I know a bank that is one of the richest banks on, pl on planet Earth can do better than this. I, and you know, you, you know if you're one of the people who works at Chase and has had to actually log into this and use it, that this system probably has not been changed since 1997. You guys have good rates. You really do. And I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you for having good rates. Thank you. I know you can do better than this. I know you can do better than this. Why? I mean, like, it's just the amount of effort that went into this or the complete lack of effort that went into this is just, it's like clear as day. And again, this is like, I get it if you're a startup or some new company, but it's just really weird when it is Chase Bank, like Chase Bank, a branded, well-known, publicly traded, very, 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 very rich bank. I mean, it's like, look at this page, look at this. Development version, not for production use. Blurry text. W that ha that is offset by non anti allies text that looks like a font from 1992, like you know, development version not for production use, blurry, unreadable. For more information, visit and it actually gives you a site, but it says HT over here and it doesn't give you the rest of it. It says HT, but it doesn't even show you the rest of it. It's a hyperlink, but you only see the first two. It's very difficult to believe that anybody actually looked at this after they were done with it. It's di it's kind of like. When I do a board repair, what I usually do is I fix the board, and then once I'm done fixing the board, what I do is I will plug it in, I'll see that the fan spins, then after that I'll clean it, then we put it back into the computer and see that the computer works. This website, this entire interface that Chase has for their uh, credit card processing and management system is very similar to if I, I, the board has a problem, I replace a chip, and then I give it to the customer and I say I'm done. Did you test it? No. Did you try turning it on? No. Did you at least see the fan spins? No. But it's good. You guys can do better. I, I know you can do better. I know you can do better. Please, please, please do better. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. See you in the next video. Bye now.